A warrior for peace, one of the many tributes paid today to Richard Holbrook, President Obama's envoy to Pakistan and Afghanistan, who died last night aged 69. Credited with brokering an end to the Bosnian War, the veteran U.S. diplomat, nicknamed the Bulldozer, was famous for his bullish negotiating style and will leave a gaping hole in Obama's Afghanistan strategy. President Obama called him one of the giants of U.S. foreign policy. In a world where diplomats mostly operate quietly behind the scenes, Holbrook's bullish demeanor, considerable ego and relentless tenacity earned him loyal friends and bitter enemies alike and almost certainly a place in history. He served every democratic president since Johnson. He learned the finer elements of his negotiating skills during the Vietnam War as a junior member of the US delegation at the Paris peace talks. But Holbrook's finest hour came with the 1995 Dayton Accord that ended the war in Bosnia. He forged a rapport with the then Yugoslav president Slobodan Milosevic by offering him a choice between peace and B-52 bombers over Belgrade. On paper, we have peace. To make it work is our next and our greatest challenge. Whenever Republicans reigned in the White House, Holbrook left for Wall Street. But it was as a troubleshooter that his reputation sustained, so that when Obama was looking for someone to help him turn around the war in Afghanistan, he sought out Holbrook. Richard is relentless. He never stops. He never quits. Because he's always believed that if we stay focused, if we act on our mutual interests, that progress is possible. Afghanistan was to prove his most intractable crisis before his death during surgery for a torn aorta. Having spent two years grappling with the embryonic democracies, ethnic complexities and historic grievances of Afghanistan and Pakistan, his last words to his Pakistani-born surgeon before going under the knife were reported to be, you've got to stop this war in Afghanistan. Well, earlier I spoke to Lord Malik Brown, the former Foreign Office Minister, who is now Chairman of Global Affairs at FTI Consulting, and I started him by started asking him if Richard Holbrooke's forcefulness still chimed with America's standing in the world today. Well, I think, you know, it is the case that he was a man for his times. He had a kind of... He, he, he had a sort of sheer bullishness about the way he'd forced through his point of view that, that frankly, only an American could have get, gotten away for, with. It was, you know, was a unipolar age for a while, and this was, this was Dick's um, a real sort of... This was when he was at his high noon and was able to get real results at Dayton and elsewhere, and came at an end of what were called the wise men. He was perhaps the last of it, these very senior figures who'd advised presidents of different parties and often between administrations rest up on Wall Street for a while, uh, advising Wall Street leaders. But, you know, I think they are a group who in general their time has passed because, of course, we are moving to a much more multilateral age where America must find consensus. Well, it's a rather sort of grim observation, but in a sense, did he die at a moment when perhaps that kind of diplomacy hit the wall in uh, Afghanistan? Well, well, in fairness to him, he was a hugely successful ambassador at the United Nations, where even in its heyday, uh, America had to kind of learn the art of consensus, and he was enormously adept at, 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 at finding it. But I do think that, you know, in, in Afghanistan and Pakistan, he had probably met his match. Uh, this was one where the fundamental circumstances of those two countries, the, the broken government in Afghanistan, the just sort of deep-seated poverty and institutional weakness of Pakistan, were not going to be f fixed even by uh, a kind of pro-consular American still at the height of his power. So is it too big a generalisation to say that we have actually moved into another age? where a completely different kind of diplomacy will now have to prevail, and where WikiLeaks is part of the story. Yeah, I think probably WikiLeaks is part of the story, and it's a much more open diplomacy, and it's, a, it's one which much more looks for points of commonality more with collegiate. your opponent. More collegiate. I mean, you know, more the age of Kofi Annan, if you like, mm. and, and leaders who, who can build that. But again... You mean we might be on the threshold of a moment when the United Nations works? Well, I'm not sure about that. But um, I do think we're certainly in a much more multilateral uh, moment. But again, you know, it was the virtue of, of this man, Dick Holbrook, that actually he was still very skilled in that. But I think, you know, the, the line in the obituaries will be very much the last of his kind. Uh, the proconsular figure who 
represented America in a very progressive and liberal way, but nevertheless an America at the height of its powers still determined to get its way, and there is a sense that that moment is past. Lord Malik Brown talked to me earlier 